I am number 22 on the list of the doomed. A recent research article ranked more than a thousand jobs most likely to be replaced by artificial intelligence. A business school professor ranks 22. That's not good news. 24 out of the top 25 are teachers and researchers. In case you're curious, the top spot is for telemarketers. After 15 years of teaching and over 80 academic articles, many of them teaching the next generation of business leaders to use AI, I feel like the cartoon Wile E. Coyote, who is a more violent but equally hapless figure to Homer Simpson for the younger crew in the audience. Like Wile E. Coyote, where I'm trying to capture my nemesis by cutting a hole in the floor only to realize that I am in the middle of the hole. The worst nightmare for me, though, is to have my face pressed up against the glass as I watch an AI bot replace me in a job that I love. Even worse is losing my position to a recently unemployed telemarketer. I am not alone in this sense of inferiority. Most highly paid, highly educated knowledge workers, valued for their wisdom and aptitude, in short, you, the typical audience of a TED Talk, face the tsunami of AI. It has already been proven to be more logical, creative, and surprisingly empathetic than human experts. And it's getting better. This is not my first brush with inferiority. A few years ago, I was surprisingly and abruptly removed from a leadership position in what I then thought was my optimal career path. My self-esteem went from hero to zero. At the same time, my wife and I adopted an abandoned puppy named Scarlett who had escaped abuse by fending for herself in the wilderness for three months. My inability to reduce her fear, to keep her home and happy, pushed my low self-esteem into clinical depression. I spent several weeks on the couch feeling helpless and hopeless. When I told my doctor that the dog had tipped me into the abyss, he said, Ted, Scarlett, is not the problem. Scarlet might even be the solution. She and I climbed out of this morass together. Coincidentally, this journey gave me a recipe for how to overcome the sense of inferiority that AI might evoke in us. Let's start with understanding the problem. AI is dehumanizing because it seems omnipotent. Ethan Mollick, an AI researcher at Wharton, said, I postulate that you haven't really understood artificial intelligence until you've had three sleepless nights of existential anxiety. Pope Francis warned world leaders that AI threatens human dignity itself. At the other end of the spectrum is AI's structural bias. Some researchers at Harvard in the Department of Biology found that ChatGPT is 30% less effective for someone from Pakistan than for someone from the United States because AI programmed in America using mostly Western content thinks like an American. If a person from Pakistan asks AI for advice on, say, how to buy a house, the resulting response will neglect local negotiating tactics, informal banking habits, and even Pakistani homeowner traditions. Imagine the demolition of self-esteem for someone who is told that AI is the sum and pinnacle of all knowledge, only to receive a response in your native language that directly contradicts or even negates your own wisdom and identity. 
Here's a three-step process for us to overcome this sense of inferiority. The sequence is action, identity, and affirmation. I asked an AI bot how to solve this problem, and its advice was to use AI more often for wisdom, for guidance, for emotional support, even for companionship. <laughs> Typically, when you're in a hole, stop digging. This advice tells us to buy more shovels. Despite the apparent contradiction, this is indeed the way forward, to take action. My wife made this leap when she asked ChatGPT for help with an itinerary to go to Sardinia. The result was specific, enticing, and easy to book. And the expedition was spectacular because we connected with the environment, with locals, and with history. Let me be clear, AI gave us a great plan fast, but it was human beings that, made us, that gave us lasting memories. More on that idea later. The second step, in order for us to take an action and to convert it into a consistent habit, requires that we re-envision how we think of ourselves. What's our identity? The key for me was to redefine myself apart from my title or institution, to see roles that I have played for most of my life and that I intend and strive to play for the rest of my life. In my case, I'm a discoverer. What does a discoverer do? Embraces and seeks new adventures, tools, circumstances, and challenges just to see what happens. I didn't invent this identity in order to react to artificial intelligence, but with this identity, I no longer feel inferior to AI. Because even though AI can replace a business school professor, a business school professor with the courage to use AI to create novel, impactful classroom experiences is better than AI alone. My goal is to move from number 22 on the list of the doomed to someone cited by AI responses. You can follow this same process in order to find your own underlying identity which could perhaps be more powerful and curious so that AI can become for you a tool in your kit instead of a mysterious threat. The third step in order for us to address this inferiority that AI could induce in us is to double down on the one task that AI cannot perform, to provide authentic, context-specific affirmations to each other in order to deepen human-to-human -human connections. Not everyone gets a trophy, but everyone merits a kind word to build their self-esteem. This, I attribute, is the reason for my success as a researcher, as a teacher, as, a, as an entrepreneur. My consistent practice in my classroom of affirming my students and my peers so that they develop confidence to use new skills. It may look like in the classroom I'm teaching AI-powered economics or strategy when in fact I'm building students' self-esteem with every exercise and interaction. Let me end with an update on Scarlett. We realized that her problem was that she felt inferior to and therefore endangered by everything. So we convinced her to use AI daily in all of her activities. <laughs> I'm kidding, she much prefers when we throw the rubber ball. We did, in all seriousness, help her develop a new identity. She is now a member of the LAD pack. It's the commitment, not the title, that's important here. We protect and value her, and she knows it, and she does the same for us. We also affirm and praise her whenever she is calm and attentive, which is now most of the time. She only gets scared and aggressive when she sees overenthusiastic, obsequious poodles with a silly haircut, but who wouldn't? 
I wish you confidence on the path to becoming more human in the age of AI with action, identity, and affirmation. Thank you.